I'm Sarah Lacey. I'm Woman Micah. Hi, I'm Nathan Adlin, and welcome to the Fast Lane Car. As three automotive journalists, we get to drive different cars every week. And that means that sometimes we don't even know which car is ours in the grocery store parking lot. At the Fast Lane Car, we have fun with the cars you'll be driving. Welcome to the practical part of the Fast Lane Car. Sarah, oftentimes people want to know how much fits in the back of a car, and I bet you there's something on your mind that I've also wanted to know. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I am. So, does, does Nathan, Nathan fit? fit? Let's find out. I fit. <laughs> Roman and Nathan got to go out and play with two SUVs on our mashed up matchup. I think you'll see why I opted out. Welcome to TFL Cars' second mashed up matchup. I'm Nathan Adlin. Today I decided to bring a vehicle that can be taken off road because we are going off road, at least on the dirt. And if you remember, last time Roman brought a massive, ridiculous, Godzilla like uh, GMC pickup truck dually. I've got a traditional SUV. It's a proper truck, it's a Toyota Sequoia 2010. 381 horsepower, has a 5.7 liter engine, puts out 401 pounds of torque. It weighs about 5,700 pounds, and it's got a lot of acceleration. It's big and heavy, but it is well planted, and it's a true truck. It has a frame underneath. It has a true low gear transmission, so I can lock it. It is an off-road vehicle to a certain extreme. A Sequoia, Nathan? Really? You feel that inadequate that you had to bring a Sequoia? <laughs> well, I've got a 2011 GMC Acadia Denali, which is not a proper SUV, but a newfangled and I think much better crossover. The Acadia has a 3.6 liter V6 engine that puts out 288 horsepower, and best of all, well, it's a thousand pounds lighter than Nathan's big beast. And to see how they do off-road, we're going to take them up the country's steepest county road, Lake Skillet Road, and compare them side by side. How's my hair look? It looks great, Nathan. Just get on with it, man. It's really hard to demonstrate how steep Lick Skillet Road truly is, but I found a way to do it with iced tea. One of the things about video is um, you can't show steep angles without showing, you know, how, how something dips, how something moves. Well, look at that. That's how something moves. That's a steep road. The Sequoia has a proper four-wheel drive system. Now, bear in mind, we're not going off-road. There's no way that we really couldn't both vehicles but we are going in dirt and there's a lot of slush and snow and ice everywhere. And as this is a steep dirt road, putting this vehicle into four wheel drive high is the smart bet. Hey Nathan, just to make this a bit more interesting, guess what, I brought a stopwatch. I'm not saying this is a race, but I'm figuring that this crazy heavy truck of yours won't do as well up this crazy steep road as my car. What do you think? I say you're gonna lose and go ahead and fire it up. Let's do it. All right, Nathan, here we go. Start, you're off. Good news is with a truck like this, I got one big ace in the hole. Heavy weight pushing me down, V8 pulling me up. This is 
a steep hill and it's kind of difficult to go around some of these corners fast in any big vehicle but this thing it's kind of like a hippo on skates it's leaning and it, it doesn't really like being way way up in a high altitude keep going those two blue barrels are your finish line okay i call it stop and the time my friend is 229 what do you say to that I said I could probably do a little tiny bit better, but this thing doesn't like to go fast. It's, it's built to go up like big mountains towing something. Well, I think the Acadia likes to go fast, and I'm about to prove it. If you're going to put a hood scoop on a pickup, you better make it functional. Otherwise, it's like a spike collar on a Chihuahua. So unlike Nathan's big burly Sequoia, my cute little Acadia, well it doesn't have all that four wheel drive rigmarole, it's idiot free. All I do is take the key, put it in the ignition, start the car, put it in drive, and away I go, the car does the rest. And I'm betting this car will do it faster than his. Alright, stop, watch right here, and go! Alright, here we go. Oh yeah, feel the power! of the American Muscle Car V6. Oh my gosh, this thing's already faster. You know, this is an SUV-ish kind of car and it's still not built for being flogged around these dirt roads. It's kind of like a story of two GMs. You know, there's old GM and there's new GM. New GM is all about efficiency and profit and quality and old GM well well old GM went bankrupt and you know what that's about and this car kind of feels like a little bit of both like a hybrid of old GM and new GM right now I'm floored I am going 35 miles an hour floored with the engine at three almost four thousand rpm that's how Next steep one. this road is we're almost here at the end, end. 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 Yeah, well, I'll tell you when you stop okay here we go yeah. Yeah. what's the what's the damage man 152. 152. So there you have it, Nathan. Unlike your big fat pig of a car. All right, it's not a big fat pig. It's just a big fat car. <laughs> <laughs> it's an SUV. SUV. A proper SUV. Horsepower and lightness uh, obviously offset each other, but in this case, lightness trumps horsepower. Would you agree? Yeah, I would. And actually, around the corners, this felt a lot more secure. So, Nathan, what have we learned from this? mashed up matchup. Now for some reason we raced and you won. You know what Roman, it's my favorite part of the show. You know, it's becoming my favorite part of the show and you brought a much smaller car and of course what must be on your mind is probably the same thing that's on my mind. I bet it is. So, does, does Nathan, Nathan fit? fit? Let's find out. I fit. All right, I'm driving an SUV right now, and it's a fun one, but it doesn't get very good gas mileage. And the reality is that we're gonna be driving cars that get much better mileage in the future. We have to. What we decided to do is take a gas, diesel, and hybrid car and match them up to see who got better gas mileage. Whether you like it or not, you're stuck, suckas. Eventually, you're gonna have to get a clean, good gas mileage vehicle of some sort in the very near future. All of us are. That's the way it is. To find out which vehicle you're going to be driving in the future, we have three vehicles that you can buy in the United States right now. And that's including this brand new 2011 Ford Fiesta. It has a six-speed automatic transmission and can get about 41 miles per gallon on the highway. And one of the other vehicles we have is a diesel. It's the Volkswagen Diesel TDI and it's extremely efficient. And our friend Sarah is driving it, and in fact, here she comes right now. I've got the brand new Volkswagen Golf TDI. It gets 41 miles to the gallon on the highway, and it's going to kick Nathan's gas ass. <laughs> You're right. Bring it on. So, Nathan, this car can run on used French fry oil. This car can run on used French fry oil. Well, this car can run on gasoline, and you can get it at any gas station across the United States. I mean, come on. I'm wondering what Roman's driving. I'm curious too. <laughs> I 
diesel and petroleum? You gotta be joking me, that is so 1800s. What I've got here is I've got a Prius, which is a hybrid. And to make this interesting, not only do I have a Prius, but I have a four-year-old Prius with 75,000 miles on it. And to prove my point that this is the way of the future, I'm gonna kick their butts in this old used Prius, which is the cheapest car here, and I bet it's gonna have the best gas mileage here. We were gonna drain all the gas out of the cars and then put in a gallon and find out which car can go furthest, but since the Prius has a bladder, it's almost impossible to drain the gas out of the car. So we've come up with a better and actually more reliable way of doing it. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to fill the cars up to the brim with their fuel of choice. We're going to drive in a predetermined loop and now here's the clever part. After we're done with the loop, we're going to come back here, we're going to fill the vehicles back up, and we'll be able to ascertain exactly how much gas we've used. started the loop and officially I think this is called hypermiling and there's a whole knowledge base of how to get the most mileage out of a Prius. There's actually a guy in Japan who drives with his bare feet and only uses his toe to just feather the throttle. I don't know any of that. I'm just hoping the Toyota's technology and my common sense approach will let me beat the Fiesta and the Golf. So the question about today's diesels is um, are they clean? Are they efficient? And that answer is yes. Um, do they hold the promise of potentially turning trash into fuel? Well, we can only hope. So what I did, instead of like filling up the tires with extra air to make a little less rolling resistance, or taking off the windshield wipers, or anything else that I was going to do, I decided to play it safe, and I got a rabbi and a priest to bless this car. So I've got that going for me. Thank you, Japanese dude. Using my big toe to feather the throttle, I'm getting, look at that, 41 miles a gallon, and I'm 6.1 miles into the sloop. So found out the plain hard rock gets better mileage in cars. The vibration of the speakers actually lightens the load a little bit. So without further ado. The other interesting thing about this challenge is that the Prius is the biggest car of all three. It's certainly bigger than the Ford Fiesta, and I'm willing to bet it's a lot bigger than the Golf TDI. So biggest car, best gas mileage, it's hard to beat. Very hard to beat. All right, we finally got ourselves some city driving here, but really, we've been going speed limits, and this is the first light that we've hit, so I don't know, there's not a lot of traffic, so I'm not entirely sure that the Prius is, uh, has hit its perfect day here to prove its gas mileage gusto. And of course, the biggest advantage that I have, keep us quiet, is that my car is silver and theirs are black, because everybody knows that silver cars reflect heat and thus get better gas mileage, right? Right? That's true, right? Silver cars do get better gas mileage? Well, that's what I'm hoping for, at least. Don't tell them. To make this loop as fair as possible, we've integrated both city driving, country driving, and now highway driving, which is unfortunate because this is where the Prius does the worst. All right, we're coming back to the gas station that we started from. This loop is about, oh, just under 40 miles. I'm feeling good. It's one thing to feel good. It's another thing to do the math, though, and we'll find out shortly. Here we go. Time to fill her up again. And of course, the one thing about diesel is that it's $2.99 a gallon, which makes it a bit more expensive. So even though you do get better gas mileage with diesel, you also end up paying more. These numbers will tell the truth. That's it. Pretty good. 0.89, wow. 8 gallons. You better mark that down for your car. 38.3 miles. Yeah. 0.89 gallons. 
Right, well, we'll see what that translates to in a second. All right, Nathan, your turn. Think you got a good chance of winning this? Oh, yeah. Yeah? All right. 273, so we're looking at about... 279. 279, so about 20 cents difference between unleaded, cheap stuff. And don't hold it, just let it click. Here we go. And you went 38.3, so here it goes. Click. Oh! <laughs> what was it? 0.89, I think. 0.89. Fine. Need to do the math, but I think this one's looking more like uh, Sarah's got. Well, why don't the... we see what yours can do, tough guy? Come on, let's see what the Prius can do. Move your card. Done. I am feeling confident. Maybe I shouldn't be feeling confident because it says, "Please insert your card again." Here's a big test. There you go, Nathan. It's going. We're gonna about to see. Point three. Point four. Oh, it's close. Point five. Stop! Please keep stop! Going, keep going, keep going, oh! <laughs> <laughs> look, at Sarah, look at Sarah over there! Woo! <laughs> I'm the winner! These wheels take something that doesn't look great and makes it look muy sofisticado, macho, and better. You know, sir, I brought a pickup truck, and obviously it fits a lot of stuff in the back. Obviously. But if you don't want your stuff to get stolen, then you got to put it on the back of the truck, not in the back of the pickup bed. It's true. So my question is, does, does Nathan, Nathan fit? fit? Oh yeah, I fit. <laughs> Recently, Nathan and I had a chance to go to Las Vegas. Congratulations. We didn't get married, Sarah. No, 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 no. I like Nathan, but not that much. No, we, we actually drove the brand new Scion... Um, TC! Yeah, yeah, the Scion TC. And... Go check out the footage. How you doing? Nathan Adlin here with the 2011 Scion TC. This one has the TRD package, so it has the larger 19-inch wheels, has an exhaust package, uh, and it also has a stick shift which has uh, shorter throws. Great car, fantastic car, had a lot of fun with it. And you know, over the past couple years, I've been really pissed off at Scion for not giving us anything new. This is new. It's better. They finally came in out of the woods, out of the wilderness, and gave us a good car. Here's the real tricky part. When Scion first introduced the TC, it bottled the cool genie. In other words, it was the cool, the it, the thing you want. But it's almost impossible to get the cool genie back in the model. And I think if you're 27 years old, which is what Scion says the average buyer of this car is, male, you're going to want a Mini Cooper and not a Scion TC. Roman loves the Mini Cooper. All right, fine. I totally get it. It is aesthetically gorgeous. It's got a great interior. It's got a lot of great switches. It's European. It's sophisticated. It's expensive. It's a little girly. In order for a Toyota to put that cool genie back in the bottle, they gotta make the interior as nice as the exterior. Don't get me wrong, I love this big old fat honking steering wheel. It's just so much fun to drive. But the parts in this car, they could be out of a Yaris, and a parts bin car isn't special. A Mini, on the other hand, it has unique parts, they're metal, they just feel nice to the touch. 
That's when the car goes from being a 10 to being an 11. Who cares about the interior? <laughs> this car's fun. That's what matters. Fun. Okay, part spin. No big deal. Metal switch gears are pretty on the mini. No big deal. What's important is that this car is exciting to drive. You know, Nathan, I thought the Mini was such a better car, but for 19 or so thousand, you know, that's not a bad car, especially once you drive it. It's really a lot of fun. Yeah, 2011 is a good year for Scion. They finally brought back something that was a real fun car to drive. Look, the Mini's great, but this car, for the price, it's hard to beat. So I hope you had as much fun watching those videos as we had making them. Be sure to visit tflcar.com for more automotive hijinks. Join us again where we'll play with more cars you'll be driving. This is Roman Mikoff for Sarah, Nathan, and Tom behind the camera. Thanks for watching and come back next time. <laughs>